forward to finding out about this machine, and it's always good when something is being brought over here by Paul Slack, so I'm very comfortable <laughs> having these people here. And welcome in the audience. We're having a program today that's going to deal a great deal with solar energy and energy possibilities, green possibilities for the society and so forth. And I want to introduce the guests in a counterclockwise way first. And on my far left is Tiffany Lynn. And Tiffany Lynn, no, I'm sorry. Yes, tick, no. She's not so far. She's I'm closer. Far left is, <laughs> yeah. excuse me, start from the beginning, I will, Jenny Nevin. And she's the founder of Green Space, a, uh, a facility out in Brooklyn, I understand. Mm -hmm. And she's involved with green developments and so forth. And we're talking with her. On my immediate left is Tiffany Lynn. She's the marketing manager for an entity called MSI. We'll be hearing a great deal about it. And I think it has to do with this computer that's one of your products that you're very yeah. interested in. On my immediate right is Paul Slack, his old friend. He's the founder, well known to uh, uh, viewers. He's the founder of the Good News Broadcast. And welcome all to the program. We're going to be able to talk about really interesting subjects. Paul, maybe you could kick it off for us a little bit here, and then we'll get into a conversation about um, what you've been doing, working with these people, and then the uh, the future for green development. I guess that's the theme we're talking about. But kick it off if you would for us. Okay, well, I think the the theme here is a lot of lot of good news. Uh, uh, it's this is in essence a, a partnership that's uh, been created here with a good corporate citizen. Uh, that's MSI uh, Corporation. Mm -hmm. uh, who has been kind enough to make a, a donation of, uh, of one of these new environmentally friendly uh, computers, the MSI Windtop uh, 1900, to the Green Spaces organization, uh, which is, um, and thank you, uh, who is uh, um, helping sustainable businesses uh, um, uh, grow, basically. Mm -hmm. And in collaboration as well with Good News Broadcast, because in essence this is good news. We love when a company is doing good. We love Green Spaces, who are also in uh, our, we're in the same building t uh, together on 33 Flatbush in, in, in yeah. Brooklyn. And uh, it's great for Good News, uh, and we call ourselves Good News to Go now. Okay. So this is uh, a, a, a great opportunity for all of us, uh, because we're partnering, we're all doing good. Uh, the, the computers have a lot of great features that are environmentally friendly. Uh, Jenny's doing great, and uh, it's just an honor to be here always with you, Harold. Well, it's always good talking to you and everything. You're in good company with Paul. I'm really happy to do it. Maybe you could talk to us a little bit, if you would, about green space. And, sure, definitely. Uh, what it is. Apparently, you're in the same building. Correct. That's, yeah. a, really, that's a really happening building out there. Yeah, it's an yeah. exciting building. Maybe you talk <laughs> There's a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. yeah. First of all, I want to say thanks so much for having us I on the show. It. We're really I excited think. about it. Mm. We're really excited about partnering with MSI and Good News. It's around the whole philosophy that we've developed with green spaces. Mm -hmm. um, the idea behind Green Spaces was bringing together these different green startups across all different industries. Okay. And by becoming together, we're stronger. So it represents all different industries, ranging from energy efficiency, new types of energy, to sustainable farming. Um, uh, and agriculture to sustainable fishing. Mm -hmm. um, and we're in an amazing building that's all about this type of collaboration. Uh -huh. And this, um, so basically with Green Spaces, what we're doing is we're providing workspace for green startup companies. And then we also bring in um, talent that's looking to connect with it. And the other thing that we're looking to do is connect with um, different types of leaders in the corporate world, too, that are developing products and want to gain these connections with these green startups. So this is our first partnership of its kind, where we're creating a formal alliance with different types of, of companies that are doing this type of work within their, their corporation and as well with Good News Broadcast that's doing that on the media front, too. Right. Very good. You got you got it all under one roof, in a sense. And it seems yep. to me, if I may, as a citizen, uh, it's coming into a new time. The, the green notion of mm -hmm. human development and social organization is really coming into a time where it's being taken by people at all levels of society with a great deal more interest than perhaps they have. It's mm -hmm. a very feisty time, as they say, in terms of things green. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. changed a lot. I mean, I, this is something I've been interested in since 2000 when I took graduate environmental classes at Harvard. You did? Where? At Harvard? At, at Harvard. And um, what was the study? It was. I was just taking a few graduate environmental classes. This okay. was post-college right. to learn about it because I didn't feel like I understood enough, but the world was changing. What did and you study as an undergrad? Finance. Finance. So okay, well, you got that background. Yeah. yeah, and my professor had said, go back to each industry because every industry will change. It will okay. be required. You have to think 
think about resources on a different level than the way we've been thinking about it in the past because right. we're running into constraints so we have to start looking at resources outputs and inputs differently okay um, and so I went back to finance worked in finance and started to see the world changing and it actually be, it, different industries were starting to see this happen uh -huh. Um, and then I founded Green Leaders at the time, but we realized all these different startups and people weren't having a chance to connect and learn what was happening in different industries. Right. And startups particularly are resource constrained. Um, yeah, so, generally that's the case. Yeah, it's yeah. like a lot of one to two person companies yeah. that have expertise in various different areas. Uh -huh. um, and so, and also it's very isolating too to be a startup company. Sure. So by coming together, be, yeah. yeah, you can gain these connections and we can start partnering by being together. They can start learning about different things that are happening beyond their startup world too, which right, can right. help grow each other grow. Do you mind if I ask you a little bit about the program at Harvard post uh, college? Is yeah. it were, is it being seriously advanced at the level of uh, concern at the Harvard uh, well, that bailiwick, as it were? Yeah, I mean, with that particular program, I was going to that. That was a, a graduate classes that you could take in their night school, so okay. it wasn't something that was being done, like for example, within Harvard Law. They don't have an but, institute. Or yeah, something there's not. Like, there wasn't like no. an institute you think happening. It's likely to emerge at our centers of higher education. I've heard not? it has from yeah. like context of mine. At the time when I was looking where to take classes on this, there weren't a lot of options for like places now, to what learn about that. When, when, I don't mean to press you oh, or no. pry, but when was it that you were taking those classes? That what was years? in 2001. 2001. I actually started right like after September 11th. Or, okay. That was right around the time I'd moved to Boston. What had you go there from finance? What prompted well, you to do that, um, if I may? That, well, it was right after college and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. With and life? I did, with, with life, life right? yeah. But and you had did, done finance, so you you were aiming toward business. Well, I, did, I yeah. had done finance in undergrad. Yeah, I understand yeah. that, but you had spent a great deal of your life during concerned with business in traditional terms. Yeah. Did, was it a big transformation that occurred to you personally? It was. It was a huge transition, yeah. Okay. And I mean, I I'm just, not trying to pry, but no, I'm just No, I mean, I was just sort of curious happened. about the world. I traveled to Asia for a while. I was, I felt like I wanted to understand, like, what was happening on our planet, to say, and I didn't understand it from all the years of education I'd had. I'm like, I still don't even know how a plant grows. It, it, to me, it just seems weird, and I'm hearing, like, things about climate change and I have no idea what that means and so I just felt like I didn't understand at all and I wanted to take some classes and just step back for a had second. Had you had a prep school training or had you had uh, a liberal arts training at the college level or entry level at Harvard and so forth? They gave you, uh, I mean like people know about photosynthesis and things out of a general education or had you been focused? Was the I've family been focused, focused on, finance, on and that finance? And I went to University of Wisconsin Madison but my background, my family background backgrounds all in business. That's oh, I see. So, yeah. See, that makes a lot of difference. What you talk about around the dinner table helps to focus yeah. strictly early upcoming young minds, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So you've, do you feel that it's a branch out for you? It's a qualitative transformation that happened in terms of your interest or not? Yeah, I think and so. And again, I don't mean to be personal. No, that's prime. fine. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely. I think but you're like a model for a lot of people, I think, possibly, or a template for well, a lot of people. Well, I think a lot of people are, people are starting to do that. Changes, it's, yeah, yeah it's, I'm, it seems like it's happening all across the board that you're yeah. seeing these changes happen it's becoming much more commonplace and that's why the world is transforming people are looking at things it seems to me in the last couple of years differently yeah and you have yeah. yeah do you think the rise of the oil prices that came with such a shock had a means of uh, pe making people interested in alternative energy uh, yeah. sources and things in a way and now Al they've Gore's gone down do you think huge. we'll all go back to sucking oil no, I don't think so because I think like certain things that have happened that have risen us to a higher level of consciousness. That you made think? Us, I think so. Okay. Because we're at that resource constraints. We now have six billion people on the planet. There's only Better, like so 6. much. Better. Six point eight, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's only in the, we're de dealing with major overfishing issues. Um, yes. In terms of being able to get access to yeah. fresh seafood and feel like that's going to go on. Right. Um, did well, you happen to see the Nova thing that Hendrix did, or, or no? What's his name? What's the famous guy? Rick Hendrick, or Rick uh, Henrik, they they had a thing about the waters, yeah, a thing on Nova, I think, it was yeah. Frontline the other night, yeah. it was really good on, on public television, about how terribly the coastal waters are being polluted with dead zones and so forth, it's a real yeah. serious concern, a lot of people are getting interested in things ecological. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why you see, you know, companies like MSI, they're creating Smith. the same product. Hedrick yeah. Smith, he did it. Yeah, oh, sorry. yeah Hedrick Smith, yeah. it was really yeah. good, yeah. The writer. No, he's a pro video producer, producer. Oh, okay. yeah. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to no, but I mean, you're seeing it like across the scale, like them creating this computer that's now it uses, what, 20% of the energy of a typical 
type of computer and so it's a way of like you're creating. using this computer now yes yeah, so we're using this computer they okay. donated it to us I think it's about and time so, we segue over to G to, yeah. to, to, to uh, Tiffany Lynn okay thank you <laughs> yeah. for that and I didn't need to okay Tiffany you're you're with MSI could you tell us who MSI is and this computer is a product of your company but could you share your own background a little bit please where you're born and um, raised my name is Tiffany Lynn mm -hmm. I'm the marketing manager of MSI MSI okay. is what what does MSI it stand for? Uh, we established in 1986, and we are the motherboard and the VG, uh, VG car manufacturers for uh, over 20 years already. 86? Yeah, that's going back. You got your you got your well founded your foundation. 1986. Yeah, 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 good. Okay, uh huh. Then, uh, then we just decided to adopt different um, diversified business model. So uh -huh. uh, we just uh, kind of like extend our product line to the more consumer oriented product like notebook and desktop. Had had you been in another field before that, in mainframes or anything like that, or what was the co company in computers all the time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And was it larger systems that you were involved with, servers and things like that, or you're getting something that's consumer oriented? Yeah. You said. Yeah. Was yeah. that a change for the company? Well, it's not change. We just uh, extend our product line. Okay. Right. So okay. Our, originally we manufactured the notebook. Um, uh -huh. Sorry, uh, the motherboard and VGA car. Yeah. So it's components. Yes. Uh -huh. And we also have like some. Um, IPC and like some system, but uh, we are really focused on the consumer oriented product right now. And, and you and you and you service the computer industry with some of the motherboard components and so forth you had. Yeah. And now you're turning out your own line, or is this your your product, or did you contribute some to this product, or how is it market? Your marketing director, are you marketing uh, this manager. to the? Pardon? Marketing manager. Marketing manager. Yeah. So you're, you're not just providing parts to the computer industry as you did, or part components. You're now manufacturing a line of products um, that will come we out. With the, and will we, we begin to recognize MSI uh -huh. like we do, you know, um, I, IBM or something, you know? Or, uh -huh, yeah, or yeah, do you understand yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, well, I think the problem is because uh, we manufactured the um, the component before. Yes. So we are not uh, very into the um, uh, end users market. So that's why, uh, like a couple couple years ago, we just designed and to extend our product line to the to the notebook and computer. And uh, last year, we have a very good, very successful um, sales uh -huh. on our netbook. Thanks to your good marketing management, <laughs> right? Am I right in that? And does this have a num a name? Is this like we would say an IBM computer or a Mac computer? Does this have a name MSI? This computer that we got in front of us? Yeah, it's uh, called an MSI computer, not just yeah. some components from MSI are in an IBM. Yeah, it's MSI. It's brand name. Okay, and that's yeah. beginning to get around in the world mm -hmm. and becoming a, a major marketer of uh, products, particularly aimed toward efficiency and new energy efficiency. Yes. That you've been able to incorporate in your product. Okay, yes. tell us about it a little bit. It's sitting right in front of well, us. Well, actually, the green, uh, the green life concept is always our main focus on the um, of MSI. So we have a term. It's called evolution. Yes, uh -huh. it's a combination of the uh, eco-friendly mm -hmm. and also the environmental. Um, Evolution. Yeah, very good. You're right yeah. in tune with the zeitgeist, I think. You know, the, the spirit of the age is going that way, it seems to me, in a large way. Yeah. Okay, good. So what is different about this than the traditional component or the traditional computer um, products? This one is with? our newest uh, desktop mm -hmm. and it's a new generation of the um, desktop for the family. So uh, it's touch screen. Yeah. And the, um, the special thing for the power consumption will be uh, it only consum uh, consume about like f uh, 50 watts compared okay. to the traditional um, desktop which will come to about um, to, um, 250 watts. That's a big, a big, uh, yeah. it, it, that's through design efficiency or how are you able to realize that? Uh, it's a, a, a lot of like parts like yeah. from the CPU and mm -hmm. from the monitors mm -hmm. and uh, the material so it'll, it'll, it'll save up to 80% power. Is that across? Can we look for that in terms of the computer industry writ large? That they're going to be able to follow your lead if you're leading in this direction of greater energy efficiency. That will become characteristic of the entire computer industry of the world. Is it coming out of the design labs and out of the 
Yeah, the, the, the new evolving technologies that are making this kind of efficiency possible, mm -hmm. or is it something specific to your product line that makes it so efficient energy, or is it a characteristic of the industry writ large? Well, I think the, um, the green concept is very important for us. Yes. So I think mm -hmm. a lot of uh, um, PC manufacturers, they are trying very hard to like do something and to, uh, to put efforts and to reduce the global warming emission. So um, I think we are one of them, and yeah. hopefully we can be the leader of them. Uh, uh, you would like to be a leader in the direction of efficiency, ecological efficiency in yeah. the use of the computer. Yeah. Important, there's so many computers now yeah. and everything. And then you uh, market worldwide or? Yes. Okay, how's the sales? Other sales for all, because this one is a newly launched. Yeah. So um, we hopefully they'll be very good mm -hmm. in terms of the sales. And the notebook is uh, we are in the U.S. This is the notebook? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a new book, uh, mm -hmm. notebook. And the notebook, because uh, we have been in the notebook market for a um, couple of years already, mm -hmm. and the sales are pretty good, especially um, last year. Mm -hmm. And the Gardner Research has uh, rated us at the top um, number five. Gardner? Yeah. Oh, wow. Gardner. They really are number Followers, five yeah. and mm -hmm. notebook. Congratulations! Fair. Yeah, that's Thank quite you. a rating. Yeah, Thank really. You. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, we are very glad to do that. And it, it's based in in Taiwan. Yeah, it's based okay. in Taiwan. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's really good. And you got all these kind of efficiencies that are there. What do you think about the? Is it um, Negroponte or something that was putting the idea of? Uh, they had a they had a hundred dollar computer to get to the youth that would be solar powered and so forth. Were you familiar with that, or the movement to get a very inexpensive, particularly to youth, uh, uh, solar powered? I uh -huh. believe and the solar powered could be yeah, wound up, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's for kids and it was under a hundred uh, young people buy land under a hundred dollars cost and so forth. Is you're not in that. I just wonder what you think of that, um, or how low are the prices going to be able to become? Are the prices of computers eroding mm -hmm. as the technology advances and the research comes out of the labs and so forth? Or what is the future for pricing and efficiency and this kind of thing for the computer industry writ large as you understand it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, first of all, for the solar power, we we um, we don't have any kind of like solar you power. You do not have, okay. Right. We don't have that right okay. now. Okay. But, uh, maybe in the future, um, on the sake of the environment, maybe yeah. we'll think about to have some kind of this kind of product. To I guess we have physical limits to what we can mm -hmm. do, but the yeah. design revolutions that are going on are pretty amazing, what's yeah. going on. The computer chip itself. Yeah. When first they had a computer, you remember that, Paul. When first they had a computer, like a little thing. I got a cell phone the other day. Mm -hmm. I can, and it sits in the palm of your hand, and there are 142 pages uh -huh. of nine script telling you all the things you can do with it. Yeah. And when the first the computer came, they had a room this size with vacuum tubes. You know, it was a whole yeah. different thing. But the whole revolution mm -hmm. in uh, technology, and they're moving toward carbon 60 now, mm -hmm. beyond mm -hmm. the silicon chip. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of development development coming which is going to be giving us more and more and they're morphing television to the cell phone now I mean they're there taking you know YouTube clips on the cell yeah. phone so we got eight billion eight billion six hundred the six yeah. six billion eight hundred thousand people and pretty soon they're going to all be able to do a YouTube channel or something like that a lot of revolution going on in terms of computing no yeah. and you have to keep track of all that and find a niche within the Within the overall marketing, where is yeah. most of the computing, be, uh, computer manufacturing hardware being done now? Hardware. What, hardware. The, okay. the hardware similar uh -huh. to this. Mm -hmm. Is it um, China, or is there on mainland China? And where is the major centers for hardware manufacturing on a global mm -hmm. scale now? And what is the direction in which the industry is trending? Do you know? Or maybe it's not fair. Well, I'll say Taiwan. Taiwan, yeah. really? Well, really? I'll say Taiwan. You would say uh, Taiwan because you're from my Taiwan. My company is based in Taiwan. I we see. are a company. So, uh, but uh, you just mentioned uh, we need to think about like some something new yeah. and uh, to um, to the trends. So, uh, we always think about like some 
um, innovation technology. So that's why I like this notebook. Yes, yes. It's um, it's used the latest uh, Intel CLV CPU. So, okay. Uh -huh. So it's very, very, very uh, power efficient. Okay. So it, uh, it also comes about one sixth of the traditional CPU. Uh -huh. And it's very lightweight. And for this one, it's very lightweight too. How much would this weigh? Do you happen to know? Maybe you don't know. Uh, it's less than three pounds. Wow, that yeah. is. That's really compact. And, yeah. And it's thin and light. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's very 30, handsome. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, 13.4 inches. Uh -huh. It's not bad. And yeah. we support the battery with a yeah. battery life about um, 3.5 hours. That's good. Yeah, yeah that's that good. is good. Yeah. And uh, and it's got all the connectors. You can connect to this in the same way to the internet as you could within a great big uh, computer. I mean, yeah. there's no connection problems. The internet no. connections and so forth are all coming to be standardized or so forth. So it's really interesting to be involved and that kind of a thing. Did you say you're doing some partnering with her? Uh, yes. Yeah, so this is our first corporate par partnership that we've oh, launched. Oh, well, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> congratulations. So we're okay. excited about it. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're looking to develop a couple of key partnerships with corporations yeah. right. so that... Um, because we feel like there's a lot of win-win benefits. The mm -hmm. companies get access to the startup companies that potentially will be future clients for them. Mm -hmm. They get access to what's happening on a larger corporate level. Yeah. We get access to products, like we'll have this computer, and then we also showcase these companies to the broader community. You're going to have this at your office. Yes, yeah, so right? they donated this product to us. Oh, very good. Thank yeah. you. That was a good thing to do. And you can mm -hmm. get uh, synergies. Exactly. And then we, then we yeah. Yeah. let our clients know about this product. We also let the broader network know about that there's this type of computer available fits within what we're looking to do because it's a green computer since it requires so much less energy and it's less resources by being a lot smaller that's too. something you're looking yep. for yeah, in exactly. your mission statement mm -hmm. and so forth right you really yeah, are exactly. looking for that yeah are you taking heart in a lot of the design breakthroughs that are coming or not Taking or, heart. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, it is. It must be exciting. from somebody. You, when did you get started out there? Right there. Well, in the green space or just yeah, in general. The green space. Well, it goes to two levels. We're talking personally. When you yeah. got this road to Damascus epiphany that you're going to go into this green area, you know, seriously, mm -hmm. environmental concerns for yourself personally, and then the company or the group or the yeah. nonprofit that you've got. Uh, well, and how many are there involved in your organization? Um, well, working with us, there's four people involved, four. and okay. we now have 26 um, startup companies slash organizations. There's also startup nonprofits in our space as well. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So about 40 people that are working out of our floor. And you can um, help them along. Yeah, and so we provide introductions for them. So there's a lot of business actually being done I on our think floor. Yeah. yeah, and then we also showcase them to the broader community. So now mm -hmm. we've got about 5,000 people in New York that have subscribed to receive our newsletter and. We highlight these are the companies. This is what's happening with That's these different online. companies. That's online. That's um, online. Yeah, we do an online newsletter. Yeah, could I get on the list? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll definitely. do that. I'll give okay. you my card. Oh, I want to be on the list. I want to be in touch with you, right? Yeah, definitely. Because there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in there. Yeah. We're sort of in that way here. Access is sort of part of that. Mm -hmm. the, the communication is for the for the people and everything like that. Yeah, yeah it seems like you interview a lot of amazing people. In well, this, we do in over the long yeah. haul. I've been doing yeah. it forever, you know. So you've yeah. got to run into yeah. some amazing people in the just the odds and so forth. But how about you, Paul? How's it going out in the new space? It's going real well. Paul used to be on Fifth Avenue, as everybody in New York knows. It's in yeah. television. And then he's moved to a new space, and it's really apparently very good. Good, yeah. good news of broadcasting has found a good place. And then we built a green television studio, mm -hmm. recycled television studio for the part pieces from lots of streets here in New York and yes. from uh, people throwing things out. and. Uh, uh, from Chanel's and Armani's and uh, Grand Central and schools. What do you mean? You're talking equipment the, now? No, I'm you're talking, talking the whole sets? physical. The whole physical location is is recycled. You got a bigger Everything. space. Everything. A bigger space and How it's big all is recycled. It, Paul? Can you tell, share with the square know, feet? How many have you got? You begin to look shows. like Metro Golden Mayor. No, no. no. You begin to look like a soundstage. <laughs> <in Hollywood? laughs> we live about like this. Huh? All right, that's so we're, okay. Yeah, we're pretty yeah. nice size. And uh, now things are going really well. You know what? I, 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 it wasn't mentioned, but I do want to mention one of the things that excited me here. First of all, to work with MSI, which is a yeah. company that comes no, out of definitely. Taiwan. Yeah, welcome. And, welcome very and much. I've had a long relationship. I've been working with Taiwan for 24 years. Have you really? I yeah, didn't the, realize. The Chinese World what, Journal what, what, put what, me in business. Uh, 
the largest Chinese newspaper a long time ago brought me into business uh, I didn't know in my that. multicultural marketing and advertising. You had been at the networks so, and stuff. Well, I was in the networks for yeah. 14 years before yeah, that. You won CBS. awards and things. I won you were serious <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A leader of the network. Whatever. One of the leaders. But what's good about this, Harold, is that what's, what, what in, in, uh, excited me initially, all this com is the computer is in the monitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I know. That? That's know? it? That's the, the whole computer thing. is in the monitor. That's so, the whole thing. You know, Where the, the hell's, where's the tower? There's no more towers. No, so I, I need to have it's a tower to plug powerless. in. No, it's mm -hmm. all in one and yeah. wireless, so mm -hmm. you can put everywhere like kitchens, bedroom, or a bathroom if appropriate. Okay. So, like, so it's that's touch a, screen. So it's yeah, very, it's very easy exciting. To use. So, the, so the combination of, a, of a, you know good corporate citizenship. And you know how many interviews I have to do thousands of interviews of companies. Ten thousands. And I Ten because thousands. and everybody anybody's doing something good. I want to put it on good news. You know, yeah. I want seven billion stories on. Good you got news all the news. Of people. You got all the news programs to bring all the bad. News. Well, Somebody ought to bring the good news. Right? The, the world is it is. If it yeah. bleeds, it leads. You know. But that's. Go ahead. Yeah. So keep we, keep wrapping. Yeah, no, this we're is doing really the, We're doing the positive is that, yeah. is content. That, is that characteristic of the computer industry that the towers are going? Everything's going flat screen now, and everything. It's. It's well, come a long way from when they, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I think it's one of the trend because uh, we just um, looking for something innovative and to like um, have little up uh, cuz um things are like too much so like the space got crowded yeah so what do you think about ways and to make the computers as prettier as possible prettier and, and also efficient yeah like and this is as efficient as a, as a, a thing with the big tower and so forth in terms of yeah. its capability yes. Uh, yes. you know applications and everything you yeah. can do you can do everything with this that you yes. could with a with a, a normal, a normal. See, I'm no. talking about <laughs> the tower. You know, you yeah, plug yeah, it yeah, in. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, well, that's encouraging. It's going that way. There's a lot coming out of the computer labs in terms of advancing the whole computer capability. Mm -hmm. They got cloud mm -hmm. computing. I know, I've heard of Yeah, yeah and that. there's all kinds of things going on. It's a very interesting time. I should think. How many? I don't mean to pry again, but <laughs> MSI. Okay. How large a company is it? How many people are involved in that kind of thing? Um, globally, we have about nineteen thousand people. Okay. Work uh -huh. for MSI. Yeah. And we design and we manufacture um, all the product line by ourselves. And you've been doing this since '86. Yeah, that's a, that's a long track record in these times, you know, and it's moving that way. And I think, how long have we got before the Moore's Law runs out? I don't know, maybe, I don't think more than about three or four years or five, maybe, at the outside. I don't know what the Moore's Law is. Well, that's where it, 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 it doubles every 18 months, yeah. the computing capability of the overall system. It's staggering because it gets exponential, and it's going and it's going down. Yeah. And then, like, you, you, literally, you're in a room this size. This is a big studio with vacuum tubes to get a little bit of computing <laughs> capacity back when IBM or the early people were, were were developing, you know, and everything. So it's a major thing. And now it's down to a tiny chip. It can do yeah. what, uh, you know what I'm, and then it's going to go, it's going to go actually to carbon 60. And that's going to be molecular. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go even more exponentially able to have computing cap capability at a molecular level. And it's going to go faster than Moore's Law. We're going to be swimming. Do you think we're ever going to get to be where we're going to be swimming in an abundant capacity that uh, makes all of the laws of scarcity economics <laughs> applicable or not? Go get them, Harold. <laughs> no, I just, want, I just wonder where it's all heading because we're becoming so mm -hmm. much more efficient. Let, let and uh, this is part of a green possibility. But there's also a counter trend that's happening, okay, too, talk I think, to me, as yeah. well. I mean, I Please. think that there's also the bringing it back to nature and bringing it back to Earth. So you're seeing much more localized type mm -hmm. of systems occur where it makes sense. So, for example, with local small-scale farming, we're starting to realize that there's a lot of benefits to that, and that's really getting back to doing the real What are work. the benefits of small-scale farming, if well, I may? Um, the benefits, it's, it, you can create much more of a diversity of crop, and you actually are taking care of those crops. So, for example, the way that the farming system has gone lately is it's creating these monocultures of crops where just huge companies come in and take over all the land and get it to the lowest common denominator. So, What does that mean, lowest common denominator? So, for example, the easiest to grow crop that provides you know, the most um, food, per se, not necessarily a nutritious food, but food, so wheat. Why is it necessarily not nutritious if it's made in a large scale? 
Because there's not as many, um, I mean, I don't know, I'm not an expert. I'm oh, okay, fair <laughs> enough. Just to clarify, just say, it's just but I just think some, some of the stuff that we're reading about is that there's just, it's creating this sort of, these large-scale systems mm. where it's going in there putting on pesticides um, onto the crop. Right. The crop is just getting more and more isolated. Yeah. So you yeah. just have one, you know, um, input, basically, into the rest of your feedstock. Yeah, so like the, the wheat that yeah. goes in, and it's yeah. just one type of wheat. Yeah. So you're not getting this, human beings are meant to get a much more diverse diverse range of nutrients uh -huh. that are going into our bodies. And then on top of that, there's all these pesticides yeah. that are going on top of the crop because totally. you have to protect it from, um, there's not more of an integrated system. It's yeah. not integrating within the rest of nature. So pests can easily come in and take over the entire crop because it's not an integrated self-balancing system. Yeah. So then you have to put more pesticides onto it. So now if the people, human beings, are starting to realize that this type of system doesn't work well over the long term for us, for our health, and also even for the productivity of the actual land. The land could be utilized much better, but it requires more intricate, careful, you know, thought out ways of using the land and actually more hands on type of labor. And so, in that particular trend, it actually seems that that's shifting to become more simplistic and, and, and rooted in. There's the term organic farming. There's a lot of that coming into play yeah. now, isn't there? I'm not sure exactly what all the. Do you know anything about that? I mean, it's where they don't use use the pesticides or the fertilizers yeah. and things. And that's hard to do though. It takes yeah, three it years. It's pretty expensive for the farmers. But yeah. even the localized farm movement too, and people are starting to realize that just going local, mm -hmm. it's empowering these local farmers to think more creatively about um, how they're using their land and to be able to, because the subsidies too in the agriculture bill subsidize these large scale farms. Oh sure. So that's a huge lobby. Yeah. And yeah, it ought to be really brought into focus by the citizens because that's one of the most it egregious is. things that it we is. have in our system. But yeah. hum I mean, we're doing it right now in our building. We're, we're engaging in a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture, which means mm. it's called Community Supported Agriculture, yeah. which basically mm. means that we are um, each putting in a, a little bit of money to pay the farmer up front so that he knows that he's got a revenue source for his farm. And then what he does is he delivers our, his vegetables to our building at um, on 33 Flatbush Avenue. You lucky people, you get all this good stuff coming to you. It's like Fresh Direct. Yeah, it's like fresh yeah, yeah. but even better. It's even better. better. Yeah. yeah. Well, you really yeah. got a good inside track down And we're doing an urban farm on our roof, too. You're doing right an urban building. farm yeah. on your roof. The but Mayor Bloomberg just delivered. announced this huge yeah. initiative. They're going to paint they're going to paint all the buildings white. And you're going to save 20% of electricity yeah, costs right. just by that act, by painting it white right. and taking it into account. And then they got other things they're going to do, and they want to make New York City the model city for effective uh, ecologically effective uh, design building, you know, you mm -hmm. can supply electricity to the buildings and that sort of thing. So it's very much in the wind now, yeah. the changes, yeah. That's why they named it wind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's called the wind. Uh, this is top. called wind? Yeah. Really? Um, this called wind. This one. This one's called it's wind? How did you get the name wind, if I may? Well, um, it starts from the 10-inch um, notebook. Because uh, last year we launched uh, a series of uh, ten-inch notebook, and mm. it's very popular. And it's because it's price, the price is very competitive. Yeah. And it's lightweight and it's very small, so it's good for everyone, like kids uh, or for teenagers. For, yeah, but why um, win? Because it's lightweight. So we just oh, like, it's lightweight. Like ride with the wind. It's our slogan for. Oh, ride for with the wind. I see. You're like. getting creative with <laughs> yeah. it. You could have called it light. <laughs> you could have called it the light. You know. So but yeah. well, at one point, we had talked actually with the, with MSI about doing, and we would, hopefully will do this at another point. Actually, to uh, be involved with an organic garden. This was out uh -huh. in Los Angeles. Okay. We had met with uh, um, a, a school out there, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll hopefully carry that further. And I was thinking in regard because you know we're very involved. Environmental and on Good News broadcast, we you do, are. We do yes. the Water Hour show. Yeah, yeah. We have forty hours Reed on. Stowe. We have my buddy Reed out at, at out sea there, for uh, seven hundred eighty you know, days. Stowe, great guy, real uh, at sea, real. going around the world for a thousand days, and actually you even have some video with Pete Seeger. And uh, you know we're so involved with the in World Environment Pete Day Seeger. and World uh, Water Day, and we're doing a water festival um. on uh, June twenty eighth <laughs> here. Pete's coming down, and, uh, mm -hmm. and we got Pete's birthday with Bruce Springsteen, all kinds of things. This Sunday, got a lot of water stuff. 
stuff. So, um, but the wind concept, because you know you can't grow anything without wind. Uh, well, you need, well, you need you some need wind. The you need the wind. Stuff, you yeah. need uh, wind, wind to to germinate to germinate the, the, the uh, our, our planet. It's amazing. It's all Isn't good. It amazing. So it Nature's fit in with amazing. the product line, yeah. which is part of the reason why I was right. all excited to be involved with with the company because right. it's all it's all making sense. Right, and, and it's moving in a new kind of direction. It seems. I mean, in a, in a, in a in a powerful yeah. direction. Price of oil is going down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can remember back in the 70s, in the 73 period, when they had the uh, gas went to a dollar a gallon or something. Everybody wanted a car that would yeah. go a thousand miles mm -hmm. to the gallon. They were trying to get things in turn. What about in the transportation? They, they, it seems to me we need some breakthroughs, in, or do we? We got uh, uh, in battery technology to allow electric uh, generated uh, transportation to get away from the fossil fuel. Do you deal with those things? You you got well, startup things, so you're not yeah, really dealing with the big up. industries, right? Okay. But I think that one of the things too, though, with the transportation industry is it's beyond just looking at the fuel that goes into the car. It's yeah. also the manufacturing of the car. It's the sure. creating of the roads. Right. And just if you look at that whole industry in general, for example, what Obama is doing in terms of creating the high speed rail line. Yeah. That is, seems to be a real solution towards um, green technology and, and green transportation for different types of communities. If there's more ways of doing public transit complemented with biking, I mean, it's great. The cars do need to transition, but the cars still take up so much energy just creating the car. And then what do you do with the car when it's not, when it's, you know, used up its shelf life in 10, 15 years? Do you years? think we're going to get away from the idea of the individual automobile and the freedom that comes with that to go in all kinds of nooks and crannies without well, going on a bicycle? Well, I live in New York City, so it's a little bit No, <laughs> New York City is the anomaly York, yeah. because you don't even need a car yeah. because everything's so public transport. Everything's all crammed in like sardines mm -hmm. to a, a container. But, I mean, across the line, you're going to have to have the automobile, I would think, don't you? I, mean, I can't imagine being without an automobile in the world. Because, well, I mean, the transit lines, a lot less if you go out on a circle like this away from a hub, you get very great distance mm -hmm. out there. You need to have some way to deal with out there, you know? But I mean, I think that when you're dealing with the emergence of the middle class in developing countries, there's going to, everyone can't, possibly they can have an automobile. If there's these types of train transformations like you're, you know, alluding to with the automobile, if these types of transformations happen in the automobile industry, then there may be a solution for everyone or for, as people develop and need more automobiles, that there's a real solution that would actually work on our planet. Yeah. I'm, Without you're polluting right. the environment. Yeah. And you got the, the global warming thing that's being... Mr. Gore and so forth, and yeah. they're talking about that as them being uh, It's also resources. There's limited resources. So, like, the metal going into building the car, and that uh, that energy used just to create that car, too. Well, perhaps. I don't know. Buckminster Fuller used to say you got uh, copper. You, I mean, you, you, a hundred and... It was a, he used to use the term, if I may, he was a design mm. fellow. He, he, would, he, was a, he was an anticipatory design. He wasn't political. So he was saying, let's make an environment through good design. He designed the geodesic dome, and the most efficient way to enclose space through this good design. And he used to say, like, uh, it took 175,000 tons of copper cable to take a transatlantic connection to London. Mm -hmm. And it was done on a chip, uh, about 100 pounds on a computer, when the satellite went up in the sky geosynchronous, and you could do it all the same. Mm -hmm. So you can recycle. Yeah. I mean, they can recycle those things. That's something that they can do. And then also you can get new things like nanotechnology is coming. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know if people are aware of that. What's coming is new design possibilities. They're going to, with nanotechnology, carbon 60, they're going to be able to create, uh, say, um, metal that is a hundred times stronger than steel and one, tw you know, I don't know mm -hmm. exactly the dimensions, one fraction of the weight through these new technologies that are moved. Doing more with less is coming available to us. So do you think the model of there really is not enough? Uh, is one that is adequate, it seems to me. I'm not sure that through ephemeralization, do you think it's possible we'll get to a world where everybody will be, um, I don't want to use the word affluent, but we're going to transcend yeah. scarcity as a material scarcity, as a reality in terms of what the design science revolution is heralding and bringing if we really get a system that allows us to do what we're really capable of doing and a distribution system 
that is adequate to creating the demand or the ability for people to buy which can be produced. We have a tremendous technological yeah. capability to provide for all the needs and wants of the people I and know. the creatures right, of right. the world that it seems our system won't let us do because we're tied into outdated notions yeah. of uh, the financial organization and that that the that, that at the level of capability the world has changed qualitatively. Mm -hmm. We have weapon systems now that can wipe out the entire species. Do you ever think I contemplate that? That apparently mm -hmm. is the case. What do you think? Well, well you, think uh, you we know, yeah, uh, well, there's a we'll bunch, of, bunch, of, bunch of uh, thoughts here. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, I think it's true. We true. Can. I about, think we can. I think it's an exciting time. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. This, yeah. yeah. this paradigm but do you shift realize things are actually if happening. that's the case, if that's the, if I may, this is something I think about, right? But if you, if you, if, if that's the case, it seems from about 1970, the weapon systems that are only becoming more. We just got swine flu now. We got other things. Mm -hmm. We got weapons that can be developed. Most of the technology been led by weapons technology research and so forth, and the weapon systems, hydrogen bombs or atomic bombs, if there was to be a miscalculation and they were unleashed, it apparently now means, unlike before then, couldn't do it as recently as the Second World War, we were trying. Mm -hmm. But now, if there was a mix-up and it got done like Guns of August, mm -hmm. Barbara Tuckman's kind of thing, got mixed up, alliances, that if they were unleashed, apparently, the modeling tells us, there wouldn't be a single human being survive. Do you think that's possible? Yes. No, it's an existential new reality in universe. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Couldn't do it for 200,000 years we've been on the planet. And now we've gotten to a point where it is. And then there'll be something on the adverse side of that, the destructive, that's destructive. Well, the that's adverse what, side that's is causing we're people to start thinking differently. Yeah, we it's may because have. we're starting to realize that we actually could destroy the planet ourselves. No, not, I don't think you can destroy the planet, you can destroy our species. Well, yeah, our planet would probably be better off as it stands right now, although I think our species has the power, like you were saying, to recreate the planet. Well, that's what I'm life. trying to say. There's yeah. something equally existentially exactly. significant as that destructive capability, mm -hmm. and it might be one of the things I try to get up, and Fuller used to do, is that through design and good design and really g mm -hmm. green, you could say, or ecologically appropriate, we have uh, transcended material scarcity as a reality at the level of capability which has never been characteristic of the human society until about mm -hmm. 30 years ago. Do you understand? Yeah. At a level, a collective, a whole mm -hmm. ecological level. I think is that good, something that makes sense or is that just wooly thinking? I think the good news is that... So I'm, that would be good news. I think the, no, <laughs> no, I think the good news is that uh, the, the world has a tremendous amount of good news and that uh, these kinds of concerns I, I believe are are being dealt with by millions of people that you're speaking about mm. and um, I, I see that and have been speaking about uh, this uh, recession as being a recess uh, for uh, humankind uh, to take a moment to evaluate our uh, what we love and what we care about that this environmental uh, 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 concerns are uh, planetary mm. and affect all human beings, mm. that now in addition to that we have economic uh, concerns which is planetary and affects all human beings. Mm -hmm. So usually man's greatest time is when he's falling because then he has to figure out a, a man slash woman he has to figure out a way to stand up. And uh, this is our, sh our shot. This is our greatest opportunity the, being the to go green. forwards, now to be just positive, loving, caring human beings. Probably don't have to show that whole kind of thing. No. This is really a better conversation than the donation of the... You rather uh, not show the clip? I, the clip we're, we're, you know, let's we were not gonna, show I'll we tell have you what the clip... Why don't I tell you what the you clip was going to be? Only because right. I think we're really talking about some good kinds of things. The clip was going to show... Uh, we were going to show a clip of mm -hmm. the donation, the wonderful donation of uh, MSI to yeah. cover the, the yeah. uh, all-in-one mm -hmm. to, to green spaces mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and some, you know, it's a little visuals of green space, but it's a nine-minute piece. Yeah, it's and I think we're long, yeah. It's a long piece, and I kind of think we're talking about so many mm -hmm. important things mm -hmm. here. Uh, we, we know it's been donated. We know it's all good. We know the content. Is love, good news is crazy about it because mm -hmm. it's positive mm -hmm. yeah. things. Yeah, you like so I, I think yeah. It, yeah, that's why we're in it. Mm -hmm. we, we're happy to share people's good news. I think what we should do now is applaud.
Applause. Yeah. That's, that's better. Yeah. Yeah. And we yeah. can sing happy birthday, but that isn't quite appropriate. <laughs> but congratulations for having made Thank that you. partnering relationship between the both of you. Yeah. We're very glad to do that. So. Yeah. yeah. So are but, we. We're really excited. It's uh, yeah, that's, a, that's really good. I'm glad they've been able to do that. And I'm sorry I got off on this well, other you know kick, what, Harold, with regard to, though, computerization yeah. and, 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 let's say, uh, uh, good sustainable companies themselves and mm -hmm. good uh, media, mm -hmm. okay? Because media, this, is, big, your yeah. media is, is, is crucial to the success of humanity. Mm -hmm. The beauty of the, of the, of the Internet mm -hmm. is that this is our Gutenberg's press. This is we now have uh, a, a media vehicle, um, web-wise, mm -hmm. that, in essence, the whole world can be watching. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, the, uh, the glaciers in Antarctica have been collapsing for a billion, million years, yeah. but now we have cameras on it. Mm -hmm. So it's like a different look. Yeah. So, the, so, so all these kinds of things give us an opportunity to, uh, to evaluate our, our existence in our, in our humanity. Yeah. And the computers, which is what we're talking about, yeah, amazing, and companies yeah. that are too sustainable, yeah. and the media. The and, media yeah, and the media, yeah. because the media has people, you know, actually believe what they watch sometimes, <laughs> and they believe what they read. Mm -hmm. So if you focus on sharing intellectual conversation, like here, what you're having, mm -hmm. or uh, positive people doing good things in the world, and that becomes prime time, mm -hmm. Everybody calms down. They cool out, you know, and they see people doing good around them. Mm -hmm. You start to have, you know, confidence. Well, yeah. that's to your yeah. original point that you were saying too. Can design solve these solutions? Yeah, I think, I think if it's looked yeah. at, if design is approached in the right manner, and you're starting to approach it in this different way, and that's part of what media does is it starts to showcase the possibilities and the options. People look at problems under a different lens in that new paradigm that you were discussing. Yeah, before. but I don't think they do. Uh, mostly the news is about politics. Well, yeah, but within the, news the old can help paradigm, accelerate that it's if that starts the, to shift too. But it's very, there's it very little talk, it seems to me, in the overall media about something really large going on at mm -hmm. the level of capability. It's all about. Mr. Spector just went Democratic, so that's a big thing. We got mm -hmm. flu. You know, it, it's, it's very the, reactionary it, short term. Well, it's think. within the traditionally inherited constitutions that are being reified in the institutions mm -hmm. that we've inherited right. out of history, but things have been transformed qualitatively, mm -hmm. and we don't take into account that qualitative. It's like James Joyce said, or, or somebody said, or James Joyce said, history is a nightmare mm -hmm. from which I'm attempting to awaken. That's a future orientation, or Pond said, the artist of the intent of the race. And we don't pay much yeah. attention to the goods of civilization and everything. It's all politics and economics no, and, but, and Aaron, that. The and good news is, and you said it, Mom. the good news was that YouTube uh, and that people will have cell phones and they'll have a YouTube station. It, it's the, morphing the, now. The world yeah. now, uh, with the use of technology, yeah. the, with the world of media, is that it's the great equalizer. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. have to have just three networks of, from where I grew up at, yeah, about right? About a thousand Our channels five on networks. cable. Everyone is a producer potentially uh -huh, now. Uh -huh. And it's just a question. And so the word, the message that people want to share now mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. is becoming more available. Good news is going out to like millions of people now because we're putting it on this website, that website, that website just by putting it out as an RSS feed. Yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. mind-boggling what yeah. just a small it's little true. operation can do or what, one little true. digital camera. Yeah. You know, this is this computer has a camera in it. Yeah. You can sit there. And you got a I, camera? You do a story yeah. Is it television studio? Yeah. <laughs> and then you can do the right. telephone. You can do the telephone in there mm -hmm. also, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. you can get, I did a story at 21 people, you know, conferencing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, for a little, little money, yeah. which used to be in the television world, yeah. trucks and studios and everything. Remember so, transponder time? Yeah, you know, it was a million dollars. Satellite Nine feed. Nine inch, middle, Forget nine about meter it. dishes to so bring you, it you to be a millionaire yeah. to get a message out. Yeah, yeah. Now you can be, in essence, almost a pauper, mm -hmm. and you can get a message out because if you make the right message, if you put the, you know, Alka Seltzer into Coca Cola and it blows up and everybody wants to, you know, 20 million people want to watch that YouTube video, mm -hmm. that's 20 million people. Well, look at what happened. And, and yeah, 20 million people don't watch you. television. Yeah, and look at what happened to Susan Boyle. She became uh, the star who, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, yeah. Oh, 
Sir Susan Boyle was a 47-year-old woman who wanted to be a singer, and everybody on the thing is like American Idol. Okay. The youth are trying to be American Idol, be a star. I know. And I mean, it's sort of narcissistic, a lot of that going yeah. on. I wonder, is there any hope from the youth? I don't know. The youth have all signed off on anything Not idealistic. Not necessarily. I don't she was older yeah. anyway, and she sang a song. She, I want to be a singer, and then she did this thing. All time records of anybody that's ever seen it's hundreds and hundreds really? and hundreds of millions of people have watched the film. She became a super duper 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 star <laughs> over she's, in she's about in, in a week. It's a gorgeous picture yeah. of her today. Yeah. It's a wow, yeah. wow. So it just happens and it really ties in the zeitgeist. Yeah. Everybody thinks they've got the answer to make the whole thing right. Because the whole thing, the whole resonating whole is so much more pregnant or is felt so strongly that there's a qualitative transformation like we're coming to something in cosmos. Mm -hmm. We're coming to the end of 200,000 years of human experience. Mm -hmm. There's something really big coming. It's like the end of a pregnancy. Yeah. And the water's about to break. Everybody senses mm -hmm. that. And it's such a time. And it's really good to be alive at a time when there's such promise. It's really exciting. Or it's most exciting imaginable. Be, I think it's very exciting. Yeah. I think, and it's, it's amazing that this sea of change is actually starting to happen, that, you're, yeah. that we're seeing it across the board. I never Never anticipated when I was taking those classes that this sea of change would actually happen. To me, it was beyond exciting in 2005 when people were actually starting to talk this way. Yeah. And you're right that it does feel like that. And I don't know sometimes if we're just sitting in our space at Green Spaces with the companies, <laughs> and we're the only ones that feel like spinning it. tails. Yeah. Uh, idealism, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I think you're right. I think there's a lot of resonance around the world on that. You know. I did ten shows today. You did ten. Ten shows, shows today of How all positive <laughs> people. World, I did. Uh, I did Oprah Winfrey's uh, Guru. I, every, all these shows of people that are just plain old. Tomorrow, Art Smith. The, today, Bob Green. But on, on subjects of arthritis and people that are all getting together to fix situations. Okay. Every story I did today was uh -huh. about fixing our our health. And it's uh, if you sat in Good News broadcast, we're inundated with the amount of people that want to share positive content. Okay. And and that's well, good. That's, that's good. That's the good thing. I'm well, stressed good. out. I'm, I'm glad you're falling apart. Yeah. It's so many stories. <laughs> so many. So much good news. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, okay, that's good you do it. I know you've been doing that all along. I congratulate you really enormously. But it's that yeah. the people are doing it. We're here. Mm -hmm. we're, we're open for it. That's the, that's the beauty of it. Uh -huh. And all these kinds of uh, places where you can place your content, they're open for it. So if anybody has good news to mm -hmm. share, because mm -hmm. people love to hear people's good news. But a lot the of people, news lot of people get, don't want to share it. You don't get good news, by and large, on the news. You just have to watch the, the right stuff. I'm reporting that on the on taxi the, on the way here. I'm like, I don't even want to turn on this news news anymore because I turned it on and then I was like scared Bird I was going flu. to get an outbreak of the flu and then it was just well, all these different things. Yeah, you turn people it on don't want to hear good news, I don't think. I mean, they want to hear something that is like McLuhan said, it's at the it's at the interface of systems. They want to hear something that shakes things up. Good news is, uh, you know, you got home. If you, if you, I got home today in the car, bad news is you had an accident. <laughs> But good news is, if, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't see much good news except well, with every, happy talk the and stuff. Yeah. Sometimes with every bad news, there's good news. It depends. You know, you got to be in an accident, but, you know, 14, 100 people, it depends the way you look at life. And that's, yeah. uh, you know, 100 people stopped to try to help that person who had the accident. You see it every single day. It's just a mindset. You start to look at the world as a very positive, half-full world, and you You'll see people sitting up for people to walk in the subway. You'll see people walking people across the street. You'll see it more than you'll ever saw it in your life if you just think in that manner, in that, that beautiful spiritual way of being. So everybody forms their own reality, and if they could think, they form it was, anyway. Norman Vincent Peale used to say, "That's think my boy. Positive. Norman Vincent that Peale that started was our business broadcast. <laughs> oh, was it really? Yeah, my mother gave me the book. Well, oh God, I thank you for that. I'm afraid it was somebody that I used to put down when I was reading it, you know. But anyway, but that was because I was a smart-ass youth who wanted to just, uh, <laughs> to, you know, tie, you know. Anyway, but uh, so I don't know. But this is really good that you've been able to get together, and the green thing is very encouraging. I think. It's maybe a sign of the times. I'd like to see more of it being able to manifest. Mm -hmm. And I hope our economy doesn't melt down and the old institutions aren't going to hold and that sort of thing, which is a, was a threat. 
that uh, is there. It looks very bad and very. The old institutions are being sorely tested, are they not? The yep. economic and political systems. We still have a very mm -hmm. in e unequal world. Mm -hmm. I think probably 60 percent of the world lives on two dollars a day or something mm -hmm. like that. And the trend is in the opposite direction. There's a race to the bottom to exploit slave mm -hmm. labor around the world, and the patterns that are in place don't seem to be able to be uh, eliciting the kind of growth and potential for everybody that uh, ought to be the mark of a liberated planet. We don't have that, you know? I think we do in a lot of ways. It's what Paul was saying in terms of the internet and the fact that there's there's these connections across different continents with people and then also this the ability to then to send out new technologies. We've got an intern that's working on creating this steam. I don't understand the energy that he's working on creating on a rooftop that he wants to deploy then in Africa mm -hmm. and send it out that's a low cost easy way of, of creating energy on the ground um, for poor families in Africa that live on less than $2 a day. Mm -hmm. um, but he has that ability to do that because now it's easier to transfer that information and also to, they're working on this new types of design principles mm -hmm. of how do you create these things um, on a massive level that yeah. require a lot less inputs to put into it if you just think about it differently and design it much yeah. smarter. Yeah. The majority okay. of the world yeah. is being helpful. Well, I hope you're right, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. The majority mm -hmm. of the world of the people of the world are, are helpful. The my Minority, minimal minority, are fighters, are, are, are warriors, usually little boys, you know, that can't talk to you. They have to try to beat you up. Most of the world, 7 billion people, is a very small amount of people fighting. They cause a lot of havoc, I'm not saying it, and some of them have, you want to get back to your nuclear concerns, but the fact of the matter is most of the world is in peace. When you think about it, how many people in uh, around you are think about how many people say if you want to do country by country, are are are, are fighting? It's it's a, it's a five percent. Okay, put the numbers together. It's a small amount of people. Has it always been like that? Was there ever it probably time when always it was has bad? been like that. It's just that those the pain in the neck ones are the ones that need help. That need, we need to hug or help or get through their uh, frustrations enough to hurt somebody. Um, always have you know a lot of times we we go towards that we we focus that we look at some you know the warrior and uh, and say and then say we yeah, well maybe everyone's like that or if you got burnt one time in your life you know then you live maybe the rest of your life wondering this but you can't have a shalom what is how does it work yeah. i mean i think you, you know the well, okay, that, 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 that's well, all. That's well, how I see so it. So Jimmy, J, Jimmy, J, Jimmy um, um, J, Joyce, Jimmy Joyce saying history is a nightmare, seems to me God, history is a nightmare. I think I agree with that. It's always been a few people running everything, emperors in Rome, mm -hmm. kings in the feudal period with serfs running around doing at their bid. We had slavery. Mm -hmm. We had women didn't have a right to vote a couple weeks until ago. a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> uh, they didn't let Galileo off the hook for saying we're not at the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. So it is a nightmare, but it's getting. You think the trend is we're getting better? It's right? all good, and all these kinds of things that are happening right in, at this room here <laughs> is helping it move forwards. Okay, well in this room, what's going on in this room is good, and I hope there should be much more of it. And I congratulate all three of you tremendously on what you're doing and uh, partnering. I think that's really great. All the best, to everything you're doing out in that, uh, you know, the, at, the, at that center. The, what do you call the Green Center? Green? It's called Green Spaces. Green it's Spaces, a good name. That's a good Max. name. And you're, <laughs> you're networking with people. And thank you very much for helping them along. And I think you, the, you've put bread upon the water. It's going to come back to your benefit. You're in touch with some really good people. Yep. And may it prosper and may everything work out well. And if it does, I think we're in for some really optimistically seen mm -hmm. Changes. I still think yeah. we need major change mm -hmm. in terms of our thinking yeah. in order to realize it's a good it thing. away from, it has uh, good from that. But that's just me, and yeah, it all, takes true. all kinds. And Paul, so good to see you. Thanks a You're lot. You're one of the most positive people thank, I've ever met. Well, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, thank you, <laughs> thank dear. You. Thank you. Welcome yeah. to MNN, and thank you. Thank you, you we'll so much across. for having us. Yeah. Beginning of a beautiful friendship, mm -hmm. <laughs> like at the end of Casablanca. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. I mean, uh, thank you for viewing. It's been your pleasure. I remind you once again on. 
my far left is Jenny uh, ne- le- Nevin. Yeah. I don't, Le- I don't have my glasses. Nevin. 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 Yep. And she's with the Green Spaces. And here is Tiffany Lynn, who's MSI Marketing Director for this magnificent new computer. And they've been able to get it over to some of the Green p- p- people or the Green Space people. And the old stalwart Paul <laughs> Slack is one more time, uh, the uh, director of uh, founder and director of uh, Good News Broadcast. Thanks for all coming in. Thanks. And all the best. All the Thank very, you. very best to all your efforts and everything. Okay? Thank you. Thank you for viewing. Tune in. We'll be coming back again tomorrow. So that's it for now and once and more time. Thanks a lot for Great. coming Thanks in. So all yeah. the very, very best. Good news. There it is. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's going to get out on the internet. <laughs> exactly. Okay. That's our logo.